in order to understand the section on rates of reactions, it is first necessary to understand collision theory. Now, collision theory explains to us how reactions happen. So, it is based on the principles that we learnt in grade 9, where we said that all matter is made up of particles. Those particles are in constant motion. We obviously remember that the particles are, of a gas are moving faster and greater distances than those of a solid and those of a liquid. As a result of that constant motion, these particles are constantly colliding with each other. But now in order for a reaction to take place, we need very specific conditions to be satisfied. So in most reactions, most of the collisions we say are unsuccessful, meaning they do not lead to a reaction. What collision theory tells us is it tells us that there are three requirements in order for a successful collision to occur, which means that a chemical reaction can happen. So if we look at a hypothetical reaction between hydrogen, which we know is a diatomic element, so it comes in the form H2, and iodine, which is also a diatomic element in the form I2, we need these two molecules to collide with each other and hopefully end up by forming hydrogen iodide molecules. So, the first principle of collision theory says that a successful collision, is requi re collision requires these molecules to collide with each other, which means that they must bump into each other so that there can be a transfer of electrons and a bond that can form. So that is the first condition or requirement that they must collide. Now as we can see here, if these two molecules are to collide in this orientation, what that would then mean is that we are trying to form a bond between this hydrogen and this iodine without providing an alternative for this hydrogen and this iodine because they are not in contact. So when we say the correct orientation, what we are saying is that they must collide with each other in such a way so that every atom present is able to form a new bond. So that is what we mean with correct orientation. This over here would be an incorrect orientation. This over here is a correct orientation. This, just for interest sake, is called the activated complex. And then finally, the other requirement is that because we know that all elements have electron clouds around them, we know that in order for a collision to occur, the atoms need to have enough energy to approach each other and overcome that electron cloud repulsion. We know that the electrons of each atom are both negatively charged, so they would try to repel each other. So it is necessary for elements and atoms and molecules to have enough energy to overcome that force of attraction so that those electrons can pass each other and these electrons can form a bond with that nucleus which contains the protons and these electrons can form a bond with that nucleus. So in order for a successful collision to occur, firstly the molecules must collide Secondly, they must collide in the correct orientation so that a bond is capable of forming for all atoms. And finally, they must collide with enough energy to overcome what's called the electrostatic force of repulsion between each atom's electron cloud.